I'm Jason Rentner with ProFootballHOF.com, talking with Gold Jacket and Minnesota Vikings legendary quarterback Fran Tarkenton. Fran, thank you so much for taking the time to talk today. My pleasure. You were in Canton about a month ago for the enshrinement ceremony for the first time since you were enshrined in 86. Talk about that experience. How was it for you? Well, I was enshrined in 86. I, I, I didn't go back for 27 years. And people said, why didn't you go back or why aren't you going back? And I don't have a really good answer for it, but when I played football, I was 100% in on football. And when I got out of football, I was 100% in, in starting small businesses and being an entrepreneur. And uh, we didn't make enough money in football to retire and not work. And I love being an entrepreneur, and I, I just got so much focus that way. I, I, I just, I, I just every year, I just didn't go. And I was wrong. Uh, I... I was forced to go because Mick was going to be there to Mick take off my center and he was going to be enshrined. I had to be there for that. And I came back and spent two of the greatest days of my life. And I was wrong and not going for 27 years because I missed the camaraderie of many of my generation. Deacon Jones and Merlin Olsen are gone. Uh, and Chuck Bednarik, uh, who was one of my all time heroes, he's gone. Uh, Ray Nitschke, who I played against uh, at Green Bay, uh, who came back every year. I, I, I don't get to experience that with him now. And so I, I miss so much, and I'm not going to miss anything the rest of my life because being there with these iconic figures and the camaraderie and the culture of the L word, the L word being love among the people, was unbelievable. All the way from Jim Otto, for your listeners, he was one of the iconic centers in the dynasty of the Oakland Raiders was there, but he played in the early 60s and late 50s, and he was there in a wheelchair. Bob Lilly, who was iconic defensive tackle for the great Cowboy teams, big raw bone, six foot five, 280 pound defensive tackle who could run, and he was there, and he was a shadow of himself, but it, it, the character was there. You have that, and you go to the the, the new red, Mean Joe Green. And, and uh, Lawrence Taylor, iconic figures. Peyton Manning came back to, 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 to see uh, his general manager, Bill Polian, come in. Brett Favre came back uh, to see the guy that made the trade from the Atlanta Falcons to him, from the Atlanta Falcons to Green Bay. He came back for that. So you see all these iconic figures, Hall of Famers to be, and the Hall of Famers there. And to be able, there was no ego among any, anybody. It was just a, a community of guys that were very special, not many uh, of, of, of us, and everyone was just proud to be there and grateful to be there. And the bonding of the group was just unbelievable to me. It was a special group that had total love and respect for each other, and there was never a bad moment. It was a moment of, 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 of experience, and, 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 and when I, the, now I'll, I'll, I'll let you get to your next question. The first night there, I, I haven't seen Bobby Bell, who came up. Uh, uh, I saw him play as a college player in Minnesota for the Gophers. He was a great, great player and number one pick of the Kansas City Chiefs, Hall of Fame player, great linebacker. And I haven't seen Bobby Bell in, I don't know, years. And I'm walking down to the, the, the stadium uh, at the concert the two nights before or a night before, and I look over and I see him. And he wasn't 22 years old anymore. He was 70 years old. And I pointed at him, and I, 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 I mouthed it, I know who you are. And he went back and said, I know who you are. And so we embraced, and we spent the next hour together. And that's what happens the whole weekend. So I know it's great for the fans and great for the people to put it on. But I tell you, the experience of each Hall of Fame football player is special, 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 and I uh, hope I hope I never miss another one. Well, we're glad to have you back, and obviously you're welcome back every year. Um, especially, it, you shared such a great moment on stage with your friend and former teammate Mick Tinglehoff. I don't think there was a dry eye, dry eye in the house when you presented him. What did it mean for you to be able to to present him at, with such a special well, moment? You know, I was, you know, I, I, I told him when, when he got, in, got a, into the Hall of Fame, he waited 37 years. I said, Mick, I feel happier for you than I did for myself. Uh, it, was, it was just the, the final story. 
And the hardship is it makes up for some dementia. He knows what's going on at the moment. But the Saturday before the induction, I had breakfast with him. And he looked at me, and he knows who I am, and we can talk, and he understands. He, but he looked at me and says, where, where in the heck are we? And I said, we're in the Hall of Fame, Mick. We are? Why are we here? I said, because you're getting inducted. Really? That's, he, he comes and goes. And so, you know, I had done a, a, a pre-taped thing for him, but, but I, he didn't want to talk. He was scared to death to talk. So I told him, I said, Mick, at the last moment, if you want to say thank you, say thank you. And so I, I uh, was backstage with him, and we went out to unveil his bust. And I said, as we walked to the lecture, I said, would you like to say anything? He says, no, no, no. You, he was very nervous. And that's when I got up to, to, to say something on his behalf. And my time was, I was going to be short for sure, about a minute. And I broke up. Uh, at the beginning of it, and what what amazed me is uh, the the, the twenty five thousand people in the stands all they were standing up and applauding, and the Hall of Fame players were standing up behind us and on each side of us applauding, and it and then it enabled me to to regroup and thank you know the fans, thank the the, the teammates that came, the Minnesota Viking fans that came, the you know, to thank Bud Grant who came as the Hall of Fame coach to be there, and so I thanked all of them for Mick, and then stopped. And we walked off the stage. It took about a minute, and my goodness, we were mobbed, mobbed by all the Hall of Fame players. Bud Grant, 88 years old, crawling up on stage, and here's a man that's stoic. I never saw him <laughs> in hot lows in all the years. He's a remarkable man, but stoic. Nothing. Nothing phased him. He could take good, bad, and different. He was the same guy. He was bawling like a baby. Joe Green, mean Joe Green was crying. Lawrence Taylor was crying. Uh, it was it was unbelievable. And and uh, that and that night, the rest of the night, to hear the other inductees, you know, get up and talk, to see all the other players backstage and be able to visit with so many of them, was just incredible experience I did have one special time Peyton Manning came back and I hadn't seen Peyton since he's 12 years old his father Archie's one of my best friends talked to him twice a week so Peyton was there for his general manager Bill Polian and he came backstage to see me and we spent an hour together and he's such a wonderful young man he's everything good about the National Football League certainly one of the greatest players ever to play and so Jim Kelly was backstage and he came up to us and I never met Jim Kelly before he's in the Hall of Fame and Jim Kelly is courageous. He's just he's just beat cancer. I mean, a year ago he had no chance. Today, he's got a clean bill of health. So I looked at old Jim Kelly and I said, Kelly, you're my favorite favorite football player. He says, Why do you say that? I said, Because you lost four Super Bowls and I only lost three. You got me off the hook. <laughs> the excitement keeps uh, rolling for you here. Next week, you're coming out with a book called The Power of Failure, Succeeding in the Age of Innovation um, on September 14th. Tell us about your book. Well, it's my lifelong quest, The Power of Failure. We don't learn from winning. I didn't learn anything from winning football games. I learned from winning. If we won a football game, we went out and we celebrated. We told each other how great we were. If we lost, I didn't go out. I went back and looked at film, and what did I not prepare for? Why did I make this call? Why did I why, why did I read this defense better? Why did I do this better? And I learned from from failure. And failure, you know, nobody wants to accept failure, but we only learn from doing things. And most of the things that we try are not going to work. But we have to take ownership of it. I played three Super Bowls, lost three Super Bowls, and 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 I and I owned that. I didn't blame my offensive line, defensive line receivers, running backs, it was my fault. If I'd have put more points on the board, made more plays, we'd have, we'd have had it. And I don't do that to be a hero. I do it, to, that's my learning process. Most of the things I do in business, it don't work. You gotta try a lot of things, you gotta fail faster. And then you get closer, the more you fail, you learn from the failure, you own the failure, and then you can have a chance to, but every great leader, Everything they do doesn't work. They have to make decisions, and they're, and they're visible decisions. 
and they make it with the best information they have, but tomorrow we'll have better information than they did yesterday. So they acknowledge that this is not the way to go. It was the wrong decision. This is a better way. I'll leave, I'll leave with this. Thomas Edison, I, I, I read a lot of history books. Thomas Edison invented the light bulb. He was asked in his book, he said, uh, the author talking about Thomas Edison, he was asked by, by some people, it must have, you must have failed a lot to invent the light bulb. Oh, I failed. Hundred thousand. I failed over ten thousand times. Really? Didn't you ever get discouraged? He says, No. That's the process. I knew each time I failed I was one step closer to the solution. And you think of medical technology and people that do extraordinary things in the medical field and and and, and, and it they go for years, tens of years sometimes to get cures to diseases. And here we are in leadership roles, whether you're a teacher, whether you're a worker, whether you're a football player, a quarterback, you make decisions. And all of them are not going to be right, but they're the best decisions that you know at that particular time. But most of them you're going to have to adjust because most of them are not the or, 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 or things we try, we find, we own. It didn't work, and that didn't work, and what did I learn from it? And that's how that process creates success. Nobody in any field, if they don't grasp the notion of failure, and the power of failure, you'll never get to your peak in whatever you do. That's why I wrote the book. I've written 11 or 12 books. This is the one that came from my heart and soul. This is my DNA. And I talked about all the failures of my life that led to success in my life. And I've been blessed in my 75 years with extraordinary accomplishments in football and business. And they were, they were all fueled and made possible by failure. Accountability seems like it's one of the toughest thing for people to, to grasp. Was it hard for you to share those painful and personal stories no. to the public? No, because they're not painful to me. Uh, the, losing the Super Bowls are not painful to me. I'm reminded of it in my own mind every day. I think that, that what the, the Super Bowl losses were drivers for me. I'm not sure I could have ever done the, what I've done in business and had the success I've had in business. If I if, if if I didn't have that edge from that Super Bowl, the, the three Super Bowl losses, because if you're a quarterback of the National Football League, no matter I set all the records, made my teammates better, but because I didn't win a Super Bowl, there's a little taint about me, right? Uh, Dan Marino has the same the same thing, as great as he was. And Jim Kelly has the same thing, and and because they were 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 not quite there because we didn't win a Super Bowl. Peyton Manning, they, they knock him because he's only won one, so he's not as good as the others who won three or four. And I will tell you that that has nothing to do with the greatness of players that played. You, you show me a better player than Y.A. Tittle at the quarterback position, or Dan Marino at the quarterback position, or Dan Fouts, uh, uh, or, or, or Jim Kelly. Uh, these are extraordinary players that were just as good as any players that ever played. And, uh, yeah, and what we have liked to have won Super Bowls like Joe Montana. Joe Montana's great. The, the guys that won them were great, but they're no greater than the ones I just mentioned. Where, where can you purchase your book if you want to read all these, these life lessons? Where can you get this book? Well, you, you go to Amazon.com, uh, and, and uh, they're running a special on it now because it doesn't fish to come out for another week. You can go there and you get a good price on the book. You can order it from them, or you can order it online from any of the major. Uh, book, book book sellers out there, and it's uh, it's available to go get right now. And again, I think they're running a big discount on it now to, for the early to sign it up. So just go to Amazon.com or any of the other bookstores that you go to, go to their website and order it, and and I think you'll enjoy it. And and uh, and uh, I ho I owe no punches, and and but I think that you will get a new perspective that might drive you to success of whatever you're doing. And uh, that's the, the whole mission of the book is to make you better. And I think it'll make you better as you look at some new ways to think about things. Well, Fran, thanks so much for, for writing this book and inspiring all of us. And, and congratulations on all your success. And we look forward to reading your new book, The Power of Failure, Succeeding in the Age of Innovation, which, again, you can pre-order now. So make sure you all check it out. Thanks again, Fran, for your time. My pleasure.